Load body, welcome to Google Cloud. Here I'm just creating a service account to use in the data store to the fire store. Since the fire store is a new generation of the data store, let's continue with that. Let's create a key and download that. This is the fastest way I'm doing this video to be very fast and not waste time without the creations of database, etc. Entities done. Let's open this. I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, let's open. Okay, here's. Okay, I'm gonna use this to my code itself. Okay, mm -hmm. just create my service account. Let's be back to the Firestore. Now let's go in here. That's the key JSON I need. Okay, uh, let's compile all of it again. Okay, let's minimize it. This, this is my project. I'm gonna share, share everything. Let's compile and run. Let's install it. Let me share the project. Okay, first of all, there is a Docker file to for the containerized application in the case. Okay, here's the resources. I have the YAML file, I have the cloud, GCP credentials, and first store. The credentials you just see the key JSON, I downloaded and created a service account and the project ID itself. Here's the full port, etc. Okay, the application is just a Sprint Boot application. I have the APIs which I'm using the first store, and here's the entity. Okay, in the case you have to use document ID, which is basically I'm gonna show the poem before I go to DCP and going to show what I'm using for that. Okay, use the first store starter, web, swagger for the APIs and longbook for avoiding getters and setters, all constructors, etc. Okay. Okay. So and once in insert we call it here's this collection, call it books, okay, as use as collection and our documents. So in this case you're gonna see like you have a collection which is books, it's our collection, our example. And here is a document. Which is a manually created. Okay, now you're gonna have to run it's okay. Let's run it. Once it's running, it should be on this port. It's offline right now. Yeah. Let's leave it. Once it's running, right. Just a banner. I'm gonna insert new rows here, new documents. That's no SQL stuff. Let's see if they're running. Yeah, it's running. Let's go into the saving post. Let's try it out. James. Since you don't define the AD, it definitely creates for you. Okay. Once it works, it should be inserting. Here we go. This is Previously what we had, now we have this one new row I just insert. Let's insert a couple of others. Alright, let's insert more just to use another. Ah. Oh yeah, it's very slow. Sorry for that. Let's insert more. Just insert more. I'm gonna show another how to get by ED in the case we have this document. Okay. Try it out. Get your we you can use the all 
Also, there is this get all slash and all the items you hit. Oh, no, it's not this one, sorry. Okay, and here you see all your documents. If you delete, it's just use the ID stuff it goes in a single document. So it's how pretty is simple to work with the REST APIs with the NoSQL database. In this case, I'm using the Firestore object. And you can use uh, Firestore re reactive repository in comparison what I did to the data store. It's another product, it's open, I'm gonna show you. I did a little bit different in case I'm using the REPO resource and REST repository resource. Repository. So in this case, I'm using the data store repository as the first source is a new generation of it. In this case, here you have all the APIs already done because I'm using REST repository resource. But in this case, I did manually. Anyway, this is how simple it is to work with this NoSQL technologies. If you go into first store, dire store, data store, it's a little bit different the interface. It's a little bit more friendly, I would say. And, uh, but this is the new generation. So you work with the first store. When you decide to work with first store, you can decide to work in data store mode or in a native Firestore mode. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.